Hello and welcome to the latest in a series of poor decisions, or I mean welcome to my latest devlog episode. This video I'll be polishing up some unfinished things from last devlog, then making some 3D models, and finally making the first few stages for my game. But uh, first I'd like to address something. One thing that I'm noticing a lot in my comments is that my game looks a lot like Danny's Carlson. And honestly, you're right. Though I wasn't really trying to, my game is looking quite a bit like a Carlson knockoff. And that is definitely not a good thing. So another thing that is a big goal this week is to make the game more unique visually. I think the actual idea is quite different than Carlson. Carlson is a parkour FPS that is mostly single player. My game, Couch Combat, is a split screen multiplayer FPS with stick fight like mechanics. I just need to make my game look more unique visually, because currently it looks a lot like Carlson. So, I know that the animations and models that I've already created don't really work in game yet. But I have tried to work on them and didn't really get anywhere, so I'm just gonna try having some fun and make the second gun in the game. The Uzi. The Uzi is a machine pistol, it'll be the second gun in the game and the first automatic one. I'll have to add a spread system to the game as well. I'm modeling the Uzi off of Sombra's machine pistol from Overwatch. It's a really fun to use gun, it's basically the perfect Uzi in my opinion. So I had to space the Uzi off this image I found online. I made a basic outline and then added details to it. I then tried to add different materials to it. I first tried blue, but wasn't really happy with how it looked. Then I tried this tan, and still didn't really quite like it, but I finally settled on just black and gray. It looks a bit more bland, but overall fits the idea of the Uzi more. Currently, the player is just always walking, and that must be tiring, so I'm going to give the player a break by making an animation controller. The animation controller was simply contained the running and idle states for now, but I'm planning on adding sprinting, sliding, jumping, and punching states eventually. I tried a couple of times to get the player animation controller to work, and for some reason it wasn't functioning. So I did the thing I always do when something isn't working. I gave up, and then came back around the next day. But then I removed all the failed attempts and tried again. Finally, I got a working animation controller that makes the player either walk or idle. And right about here is whenever I took a week long break to make a jam game. There should be a little eye thing popping up now if you want to check out the video I made on it. But anyway, I'm back and I'm going to give the pistol model and animation some upgrades. First off, I just went into Blender and tried to properly set up the animations so I can use them in Unity better. Then I gave the player hands. I remade the shooting animation with hands this time. Then I created a new idle animation that just gradually moves up and down. Finally, I started work on an actual reload animation. While it's not too impressive, after a full day of work on animation, this is what I have. I mean, it's a start. So I just spent around another two hours long animating it. And now I have all the pistol animations I could ever want. That is, until I inevitably redo every single one of them. As you can see, I even added a nice little pickup animation, which should make picking up the guns a lot better feeling. Now that I have animations, I need to use them. So I imported the new model into Unity. I resized it and got it ready for animation. Then I just made a new animation controller. But currently the arms and guns are animated in two separate animation actions, for some reason. I put the animations on the same animation controller and put them on different layers, with one of them on a layer weight of 1. And now the animations finally work properly. I also sped up the reload and pickup animations in Unity. It isn't perfect, and it didn't really work for the shooting animations, but um, I don't really feel like importing all the stuff again, so I'll just stick with this for now. At this point, I've spent around half my life just trying to get these shooting animations done and imported into the game. So I'm glad that I'm finally moving on to something else. The next part of this devlog will just be dedicated to talking about my process of trying to develop a graphical style for my game. Yeah, I know, level design is coming in eventually. The first thing I did was just make a bunch of models. The first area of the game is going to be a forest area, with trees and rocks and stuff. So I started making some 3D models. I made trees and rocks and grass, bushes and some flowers. Then I imported these models and started putting them together in the game. I got a nice new skybox off the asset store and adjusted the post-processing settings a bit. Some of the inspirations for this game's planned aesthetic are Beat Saber and Stick Fights. 
I like the Beat Saber aesthetic of floating in a void. It might try to do that instead of the cloud thing I'm doing right now for the skybox, but I left it there for the rest of the stellar. And the stick fight inspiration is basically just the dark platforms with the colorful tops. But I think this will look a whole lot better on a less flat and empty map. Okay, so I bet you're thinking, this video is titled, Learning Level Design. Where's the level design? And that is a true, valid point that I will ignore, because guess what we're doing right now? I don't know much about level design to begin with, so I've been watching videos and reading guides and stuff over how it's done well. And these are the basics I've decided on for Couch Combat's style of level design. Yes, there are styles. The first hurdle I had to make it over for this game is fairness. The levels have to be somewhat fair for all four players, or if they're just two, and though the game isn't really intended for three players, it should be sort of fair for three. So how do I make a map fair? Well, the most obvious way is to make the levels fully symmetric for all the players, but this is somewhat boring and limiting. But with some smart level design, I can hopefully use this way to make the majority of the levels. The other way is giving different spawns pros and cons. Like if one spawn has the higher ground, and the other has lower, then I can give the lower down one more guns and a bit more cover to make up for the invaluable advantage that is the high ground. Just ask Anakin. Finally, an easy way to fix this issue is just spawning all the players at the four corners of a large circle or something. The main part of the map will be in the center, with all the loot and stuff, but the further edges are a bit more sparse. So people all run into the center. And also, if I can't think of anything else to do, then I can just spawn the players right next to each other and let them fight it out that way. Okay, so that was a lot of talk and not much level design, so let's get to actually making levels. I'm creating a workflow for making levels as I go along, so it's kind of messy right now. But basically, I start off by just sketching out a basic design of the level. Here it is, the basic design is just a bunch of different level platforms. It's a very basic level. I then put all the platforms in and stuck a bit of green on top of them. Then I added trees and made the whole thing a bit wider. Next I added bushes, rocks, and other details, and finally I copy and pasted the same piece of grass about 500,000 times. And then I took this cool video rotating around it. That was the first level, but one level is not satisfactory. So I'm making another. And this one, all the players just start off on floating blocks, and then they have to jump down into a big ravine. So I just sketched out the idea, and then I blocked it out. Okay, and here's the finished block out. Then I added materials and the green top to the blocks. Then I added trees, bushes, and flowers. Finally, I added all the grass things again, and here's the final version of this map. It's a lot more creative than the other one, but we'll probably need a lot more playtesting to make it work well for players. So I actually finally got source control set up with GitHub. I, if you don't know, source control is basically a way for me to back up a project as well as possibly collaborate and revert it to older versions if needed. Really super useful and a good safeguard for to have on any project. But the final thing I did was add a basic stage transition that just happens a few seconds after one player dies. Then I attempted to add a simple sprinting mechanic, but it just increased the distance you can jump for some reason instead of the speed you run at. Well, whatever, I'll add sprinting later, if at all. So yeah, that's about all I did this week. Um, I do think the game is quite a bit further along than it was, but a large amount of time was actually just spent doing the game jam from the last video. I'm going to change the split screen so it's uh, the two longer screens on top of each other. Just haven't gotten all around to that yet. The third person models are going to be redone and made into one piece so they won't look as bad. But just that's also something I haven't gotten around to doing yet. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and hit like and subscribe and all that garbage. Bye.